Coming up this week, Roadshow gives us a look at the Mustang Mach-E GT performance. Volkswagen shows us a disappointing GTX version for the ID4. Honda aims to kick gas by 2040 and more. Hello friends and welcome to episode 62 of the EV Resource Podcast. I'm Zach Hurst and each week I bring you the latest EV news, information and answer your questions about electric vehicles. If you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you like the podcast today, make sure you share it with a friend. Kicking us off this week is a story coming from Chris Pockert over at CNET's Roadshow. Chris got an exclusive ride-along opportunity on a Ford test track with the all-new, yet-to-be-unleashed Ford Mustang Mach-E GT Performance. And boy, it is something. 480 horsepower and 634 pound-feet of torque. This is where the Mustang performance really comes out to play. We're at Ford's private test track. In fact, we're in the twistiest, most challenging circuit the company's got, with loads of tight turns and up and down whoops in a sequence that's designed specifically to upset a car's balance. Now, every GT comes with all-wheel drive, and the standard GT offers 480 horses and 600 pound-feet of torque. We're in the Performance Edition, however, and that has even more twist, 634 pound-feet. Zero to 60 and 3.5 with this performance model. Yeah. What is it with the non-performance model? It's about 3.8. 3.8. Okay, yeah. so either way, you're talking better than V8 gas 5-liter oh, yeah. GT performance, yeah. right? Yeah, you're talking so, wicked times. The great thing about this GT performance is, you know, Mustangs have always been real-wheel drive, right? Mm -hmm. And we are biasing the power and the GT performance. We're about 40 in the front and 60 in the back. So we're still giving you that Mustang. If you noticed a few times through here, I had that back walking out a little bit, right? And that's what that Mustang feel is all about, right? It's controllable, but I was able to get the back to step a little bit out, right? The standard Mach-E defaults to more of a 50-50 torque split, so this model is more aggressive by nature, and Ford's goal was to make the GT feel even more like a rear-wheel drive car, a traditional Mustang that can hang the tail out just by moving your right foot. Prices for these latest electric Mustangs start at $61,000 for the GT and $66,000 for the GT Performance. Now, if that sounds like a lot to you, do remember that Ford still qualifies for the $7,500 tax credit, so that might make a difference to prospective buyers. The first Mach-E GT SUVs should be arriving later this year. And Ford isn't done with the branding of their EVs. Now, according to a document obtained by Car and Driver, the Ford F-150 electric will carry the Lightning name. And for those of you who do not remember, the previous Lightning models were street sport trucks with powerful engines, large wheels, and low-profile tires. And I actually believe the last Lightning F-150 had the supercharged 5.4-liter V8 that pumped out 380. 80 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque. That's no slouch. As for the electric F-150 Lightning, Ford is keeping that information close to their chest until the EVs reveal later this year. In fact, the only images we have right now are a few spy shots, and honestly, they don't show much about, it just looks like an F-150 for the most part. Um, but a black and white photo showing the front actually shows an LED light bar extending from edge to edge across the hood line. So it's obvious that Ford is definitely going to accent that this is an electric vehicle. I'm excited to see the styling. I, while I'm not a truck person, I have to get excited about the Ford F-150 becoming electric because that is the number one selling vehicle in North America. If we can have an electric version that now the buyer of that vehicle can compare electric, gas, electric, gas, and then decide between the two of them for the same brand, the same make, you know, it's both Ford, that is going to be huge. And Ford knows that they're going to have to get this right. Honestly, by putting Mustang on the Mach-E, that name, they knew they had to get it right too. And from the looks of it, this GT performance and the GT are really going to embody the Mustang spirit. So with the F-150, it's going to have to be that hardworking, get in the mud, just rough truck. And the fact that they want to make a performance model 
and use the Lightning brand. Oh, I'm excited. I cannot wait for this. When Ford does reveal the F-150 electric later this year, we should learn at that point battery pack size, power output, and Ford actually claims that the truck will have a dual motor layout with and be the most powerful F-150 ever. So power, I can't wait. That's going to be cool. Uh, range, of course, which is very important, especially while towing. And that's one thing I just don't think we're going to see. Um, I don't know that manufacturers are quite ready to reveal the range that you'll get when towing with an electric truck. Um, but hopefully, you know, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Either way, honestly, this is going to be awesome. I'm excited. I can't wait. Uh, and I hope that you guys are excited too. I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. I mean, this is huge. Honda has finally joined a number of major players in the automotive world by announcing this week their goal of 100% electric car sales globally by 2040. This will follow its 2030 and 2035 sales targets of 40 and 80% electrification respectively across all markets. Honda will also launch a series of next generation electric vehicles based on a new e-architecture, which will be a completely new EV platform between 2025 and 2030. And due to regional differences in acceptance level, existing infrastructure, and the availability of renewable technology, Honda plans to take a different approach to electrification in each market. Don't get too excited yet. It is worth noting that this electrification plan doesn't have them halting production of hybrid vehicles anytime soon. Here in North America, Honda plans on leveraging their alliance with GM as one of their strategic partners, saying that the pursuit of electrification in North America will allow them to take advantage of the respective strengths of both companies. Honda and GM are jointly developing two large-sized EV models using GM's Ultium batteries, one under the Honda brand and the other under Acura, and they plan to introduce these models to the North American market, so we've got a couple years before we should see these hit the road. Next, I have mentioned quite a few times on this podcast that EVs are safer. And if you've ever met me at a local event, you've probably heard me say that even more as I'm talking about electric vehicles to the people that are walking by asking questions. Well, this week I got some more validation from CBS News of all places. They ran a report on some recent IIHS crash tests showing that a few different EVs got top safety pick honors. Check this out. In crash test to the front and the side, the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E performed well, earning a top safety pick award. The SUV is just one of several electric vehicles recently analyzed by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The Volvo XC40 Recharge, Audi e-tron, and Tesla Model 3 all earned the highest honor of top safety pick plus. These electric vehicles are performing just as well as the internal combustion engine models. IIHS President David Harkey calls the results encouraging since the manufacturing of electric cars is speeding up. Electric cars also appear to perform better in the real world, protecting drivers and passengers. The Highway Loss Data Institute says injury claims for electric vehicles were about 40% lower than accidents involving identical gas-powered models. One of the reasons we think we are seeing that is because the weight of an electric vehicle is greater. E-powered cars weigh more because of the heavy batteries. And research shows occupants and heavier vehicles experience less force in a crash, leading to fewer injuries. The IIHS will test more electric cars later this year to see if they also make the grade. So that's good news for buyers that are concerned about safety and should help bolster consumer confidence in electric vehicles as a newer technology. There is so much negative press and media attention around electric vehicles that just spreads FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So I couldn't let this story pass by without sharing it. And on to our penultimate story, Volkswagen has revealed a dual motor, all wheel drive, more powerful version of the ID4 that they're calling the ID4 GTX. Inside EVs shares that it's sadly not a solid performance model like the Golf's GTI. Instead, it's an ID4 with an all wheel drive powertrain and some added sportiness. They say it'll be a great alternative for those who want a little bit more flair in their ID4 electric crossover. 
but personally, I think it'll fall disappointingly short of a performance version, and I'm not sure you can even really call it sporty. Now, I loved the ID4. However, when I test drove one, I definitely found that it was underpowered and lacked all excitement in the way it drove. And maybe the GTX will fix some of that and for guys like me, make it a little bit more palatable. But then again, probably not. Volkswagen says it's expected to have 295 horsepower instead of the 200 found in the first edition rear wheel drive. And the ID4 GTX will hit 100 kilometers per hour, which is 62 miles per hour, in 6.2 seconds. And this is where I start to have an issue with the fact that they are trying to present this as sporty. 6.2 seconds to 62, so let's just call it 6 flat to 60. That's not quick enough at all. Volkswagen is presenting this as a sporty model. You don't get to count a six second zero to 60 as sporty anymore. You just can't. In the 90s, you could. A 1995 Aston Martin DB7, okay? Really, like, that's a sports car. It did a zero to 60 in 6.1 seconds. The 1996 BMW M3, undeniably sporty, would do it in 6.5, which is slower than the GTX. But that was the 90s. Now, a 2019 Toyota Avalon will do it in six flat. Other SUVs, the 2020 Lincoln Aviator, which is massive and heavy, that'll do a zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds. That is not a vehicle I would call sporty. Hell, even a diesel Volkswagen Touareg will do zero to 60 in 5.9. So come on, Volkswagen, if you want to say the ID4 is sporty, then it has to compete with the Mustang Mach-E, the Tesla Model Y, and others in that segment. And if not, if you're just not going to compete on that level, then don't call it sporty. Just admit that it's boring. Perfectly so, and that will be just fine. Don't try to put it out there as something it's not. Now, you may disagree with me, and that's okay. Leave your comment in the YouTube comments or email me. I'm open to it. I'd love to hear your point of view. And maybe, just maybe, I'm so wrong about this that we'll see some ID4s racing on the drag strip because the National Hot Rod Association, Naira, has announced the creation of an all-new electric vehicle racing class that will join the Naira Summit Racing Series in 2022. For decades, Naira's member tracks have seen EVs, hybrids, and alternative energy vehicles use their racetracks as a proving ground. Creating an EV class within the Naira Summit Racing Series accelerates the Naira's commitment to its racers and partners looking to develop new technology. With the rise in performance of electric street vehicles, hello, also comes the need for the Naira to provide a safe place to race and a platform for competitors to evolve and demonstrate their capabilities. Naira's EV race car initiative was launched to bring automakers, racers, the safety industry, and the performance aftermarket together as one group. Summit Racing Equipment is involved as well. Al Noe, their chief marketing officer, said, quote, we're ready to support the EV market in the same way we support the internal combustion engine market, by leading the way in selection, service, and technical resources. No matter what the power plant is, we will continue to help racers push the limits of power and performance through a huge selection of quality parts from respected brands, end quote. Multiple meetings between Naira and global OEMs during the past four years have discussed the technical challenges and opportunities that have come along with EV drag racing. During that time, Naira fans have seen the debut of the Chevy Ecopo drag car, a match race between the supercharged Ford Cobra Jet Mustang and the all-electric Cobra Jet 1400, which I've played that on the podcast before, and the 200 mile an hour EV record breaking pass by an all electric dragster piloted by legend Steve Huff. And a shout out to the legend that he is. Actually, let's take a quick second and relive that moment, shall we? One, there it is, history, 752-201. Oh, oh my goodness, Steve, you did it, you did it, congratulations, wow, wow, 201, you are the first.
first. What was the ET? Man, what a historic moment. And if you're not a fan of motorsport, that's okay. Obviously, I am. But through competition, through racing, through all levels of motorsport, innovation is driving technological improvements, efficiency improvements, power improvements, all sorts. And this makes its way into the cars that you and I drive. If it weren't for motorsport, we wouldn't have it. And for this reason, more than most, electric motorsport is so important to the future of electric transportation. All right, so that's all I have for you for the news this week. So let's move on to our weekly Q&A. This week's Q&A is brought to you yet again by Charged Future EV Consultancy. If you or somebody you know is interested in the purchase of an EV or getting charging installed at a business, reach out to Daria and he'll help determine the best path forward. Mention that you heard about Charged Future here on this podcast for a 10% discount on any build services. The initial consultation, however, is free, so head over to chargedfuture.com to get started. So last week, the question was, if you could give a ride in your EV to any one person on the planet, who would it be and why? And I got some really interesting answers. Jeffrey C. Jacobs said Biden, President Biden, because he needs to feel the heads back demo. Heads back demo, meaning the pure acceleration. And Jeffrey, I believe, has a performance Tesla Model 3. So definitely uh, quite the demo indeed. Sky George Paxalt said, my late father. He was a Chevy dealer between 1950 all the way to 1965. Yeah, I bet he would be pretty amazed with the modern technology and to see how far GM and Chevy specifically have come. Greg Fuller with Voltage Velocity Games said, how about Ferdinand Porsche? Let him see just how far EVs have progressed since his first electric car, the P1, in 1898. And that's right, actually, because, of course, EVs were much, much more significant than gas-powered cars before the turn of that century. Charles Durena with Drive Electric RVA said Mitch McConnell so he can see how awesome EVs are and support President Biden's infrastructure bill. So we've got some guys that uh, want to influence politics here. And uh, I love that, obviously. Uh, you know, any way we can get EVs to be more provident, um, it really is a benefit for all of us, even if you don't drive one. So I love those answers, guys. Thanks for submitting those. The question I have for you all this week is perhaps a little foreshadowing to something I've been planning to talk about for a while now. And that is, uh, the question is, do you think 800 volt architecture with EVs will quickly prevail as it seems to be more and more common? Or will we be driving 400 volt EVs for a long time? So submit your answers via email to hello at ev-resource.com or respond to the social media posts on Facebook or Instagram, possibly Twitter, but that's never a guarantee. And I will read them out on next week's podcast. So that is your show for this week. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Please share this with your friends or anybody that you think will be interested in electric vehicles. A shout out to our Patreon executive producers, Rajiv Narayan and Greg Fuller. And it is the beginning of the month. So James Hart gets his name read out because he's at the producer level. If you would like to support the EV Resource Podcast, get your name read out either every week or once a month as well as having access to the EV Resource Magazine and other benefits, you can check us out there at patreon.com slash EV Resource. As always, I invite your feedback for the podcast via email. Uh, of course, that once again is hello at ev-resource.com. You can always leave a comment on the YouTube video and don't forget to subscribe. That way you'll get all the future shows delivered to you automatically. If you do want to listen to any of the previous podcast episodes, you can find them on our webpage under the podcast section and on many of the major podcast platforms. Take your pick. So with that, I'll end it. Thank you so much for being with me and I'll catch you next week. <laughs>